everyone, it's the Wise Bubbler here, and today we're going to go over Google OAuth, which is essentially an API call that allows you to use the uh, Google uh, YouTube API, the Google Calendar API, and the Google Drive API, and a bunch more, but we'll just focus on those. Those are just clear examples, but I'm going to go over how to set up that precursor call that will allow you to use all those APIs because you can't use them until you authenticate with Google, um, and that is not built in to the current bubble login with Google uh, plugin. So we'll have to build it ourselves. So it's actually pretty simple. And to get started, we're just gonna go into our console.cloud.google account. Uh, and if you don't have an account, obviously create that. On the top here, we're gonna create a new project. And let's call this project Google OAuth for wise bubbler get a long name um, and then we'll click create cool now we can see it's creating the project and let's click select project now we can see we're going to google auth for a wise bubbler awesome so let's start by enabling apis and services um, and let's just click the youtube api but if you want to use google calendar you'll also probably have to enable that api um, I don't want the analytics, I want the data. Cool, click on that, um, click enable. Awesome, and then over here, we're gonna go back to our API and services and click on credentials. And then we will, before we actually create credentials, um, Oh, we'll click create credentials, click OAuth um, client ID. But before we do that, it's going to prompt us to create configure our consent screen. So let's do that. Um, we want this app to be external. It's not for an internal use. And let's just call this um, Google OAuth tutorial. Awesome. And then the support email should be your email that you want for this app. Don't add a logo because they're going to have to confirm that. Uh, we won't add this app domain when you're ready to make this a real app um, and push it to live. Obviously, you want to add all these links. Uh, you don't have a, if you don't have an authorized domain, you just need to add in an email address. So let's put the wise bubbler at gmail.com. Cool. Let's save and continue. Oh, got an error here. So. That was just a weird error. Not sure why that happened, but we went back here and just put in our email address. Maybe they didn't match. Um, and we're just gonna click save and continue. And then we have this thing called scopes. And so that's what you wanna allow your app to access. So if you wanna allow it to access YouTube, in my case, I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna go look for YouTube um, so not cloud and so YouTube data API view your YouTube account manage your YouTube account that's probably fine but uh, probably want this I want like everything that you can do with the YouTube data API and yeah manage your YouTube videos we want full access and we will just click update and now we can see we have all these things here so now we can actually access um, YouTube. Next thing is we're gonna do save and continue, and we have to add a test user, otherwise it won't work. Um, so until our app is verified, we have to add a test user, and you just want a sample user. Um, and as you can see, I'm using the same user throughout the whole app, just enter the email here, and now it'll only work with this user on your test, using uh, when you're testing the app. Lastly, we can see the summary. Perfect. Now we just need to go back to dashboard. And now let's go back to credentials. Now that we have our OAuth consent screen, we can actually create credentials and we want to go to OAuth client ID. Click application type. Um, if you're building on Bubble, it's a web app. I'll we'll call it why is Bubbler. Tutorial. Um, authorized JavaScript or origins don't matter, uh, but the authorized redirect URL 
is what really matters here. And this will be the URL um, from your bubble app. So going back um, to our bubble app, again, we're gonna install the API connector, create a new API connection, call it Google Auth and change the authentication on the right. So if we put it none or self-handled, it'll just be empty. But then we have to go here and click Auth to user agent flow. And on the bottom here, we see this URL that we're gonna use. And so we need to click this check box and mark it as there and just copy this URL. This will be our authorized redirect URL. So we'll go back here, paste it in, and then we will click create. Cool. Now we have our client ID and client secret. Um, and so then you're just gonna take these and click OK. And afterwards, you can see here that we're off to client IDs and we can click on this and we can see our client ID and client secret. Obviously, these will be deleted after this video. Um, so if you're a hacker, no need to try and use them. Um, and so you can paste your app ID here and your secret in the secret area. And in this time, we're gonna put it both in the development and live version. So we can use it, the actual live API key with the test user, the development version two. I'm just copying the same thing down here. Perfect. We are all set on the Google side. Now we just have to click, yep, save. We didn't really change anything. And now we have to jump into Bubble. So we got this OAuth, we have the app ID, the app secret, the development ID, and the dev secret. Now we just check this box uh, and check this box. And now we have to go in and add in scopes. Um, so the scopes are just essentially what we need access to. So in order to get Bubble to work, you need access to the profile, the email, so you have to actually log in with Google, and then you add in whatever else you want. So we just have the YouTube scope, but if you had Google Calendar, you'd have to have add in the Google scopes, uh, sorry, the, the calendar, Google Calendar scopes, but I'm just gonna, I just have them pulled out, the YouTube scopes that I wanna access. Um, I have them in a note here, let me just pull it up. And here we can see all the scopes we need. So this is essentially what we're giving uh, Google access to. It's very important, the user info profile, user info email, the YouTube force SSL, YouTube upload and YouTube. These are just essentially different permissions. And I'll drop a link to where you can see all the scopes um, in the description to this video. Essentially you just wanna paste these um, with a space in between them in that scope field. So I'm gonna go to scope, paste this, click space, and then paste the next one. Um, let's go here, space, paste, and I'll just repeat that for all of them. Great, now we have them all here. And if you kind of scroll through, you can see that the last one is there, YouTube. Um, and the next thing we have here is just the login dialog redirect. And so that is essentially the, um, I don't understand it fully, but I think it's like the, the page you need to go to when you click login. So that's like the login with Google page, the access token endpoint and the user profile endpoint. It took me a while to get these. So I will drop these in the description. It's really hard to find them in the docs. Um, but you just need to paste these three URLs in here. And for this last one, it's pretty important you put the alt JSON here for user info. And then you can keep these as the ID and the email. Um, and I think we are pretty much good. Let's go test it out. So to test it out, I created just a simple page here with a login and logout. So let's go to the screen here, see login, logout, and current user's email. So we can see that we're actually logged in. Um, and let's set up some logic here. So here and click login, and then we will go to 
log in with social media and we can see that our API Google OAuth pops up and let's see if this works. Click on the login here and we can see that it redirects us to the Google page. Click on the wise bubbler, we click continue and we can see that it's asking us for access to the YouTube, our YouTube data, which is what we wanted. If you were accessing calendar, you would add the calendar scopes and it would show all of these. Then you click continue and we can see you have successfully initialized the auth to connection to the API. You can go back to the editor and keep building. So now we have access. The API is correctly set up by the auth provider and now our authentication is set up so we can actually use the YouTube API. So now we actually need to add an API call to access YouTube. So let's do that. So now I am in the YouTube API docs. It's just developers.google.com slash YouTube slash v3 slash docs. Um, and over here we can see all, everything we can do on the app. And, but I just wanna do something simple to make sure the authentication works. Um, so just one thing to keep in mind, you're limited to 10,000 units per day. Uh, and each API call tells you how many units it costs. So for example, uh, this getting a video list or a list of videos cost one unit. Um, but I've ran into lots of issues where if you wanna modify videos, you're gonna run into limits. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, and so over here, we can see that there's an HTTP request. Um, so we can see it's a get request. Perfect, so let's go back to our app and call this a get request. Let's make this an action and let's just try and you know, make it data. And we want to just get access to a specific video's data. So we wanna get the title, description, etc., cetera, um, for one video. Um, so let's just do a get and copy this endpoint. Cool, paste it here. And the next thing we see is it says part, this is a required parameter, and we need to decide what part we want to access of the video. So essentially it's saying you have to tell us what you want from the video. And this is a bit confusing because obviously I know I want like the title and description. And so it's saying, for example, in a video resource, the snippet property contains the channel ID, title, description, tags, category ID. Perfect. So we can see that we have the title and description here. So as such, if you want to get the part.snippet, they will contain all of those properties. Perfect. It's giving us exact instructions. I don't really care about the statistics or status, stuff like that. That's what I want. So I can just literally copy this part.equals snippet and put that in the header. I need to put a question mark before it and click paste. Cool. Now we're going to get access to the snippet. But we, now in this case, we're gonna get all the videos of my YouTube channel, Wise Bubbler. So we wanna limit this to just one video. And so we can actually use filters and we can filter by the YouTube video ID. And so to do that, we're just gonna copy the ID because we only want for a specific video. And I'm gonna paste here ID. And now I'm gonna to go to my YouTube channel and grab an ID of one of my videos. It has to be like um, one of my videos. Cool, so I copied one of my IDs and now I'm gonna paste it here. This is an ID for a specific video and you can make this public if you want to edit it uh, using dynamic data. Let's make it private for now. And now let's initialize the call and see if that works. Oh, let's get this. Get YouTube video. Initialize the call and we can see we got all the details. Um, we're getting the snippet title, managing pop-ups within repeating groups on bubble, uh, test, test description, etc. We're getting the default URL um, for the thumbnail and all this info about the app that we can then use. And you can just, now that you have this OAuth, you can just add more API calls here that will include YouTube API. And if you want to add anything with a calendar, you have to add the scopes in that you want, and then you can do all the calls. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna add a link to the editor, um, to a copy of this editor in the description that you can buy access to. Again, if you have any questions, definitely 
message me on Twitter or at wisebubbler at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching.